produced by Let's Liberate Diversity, which is Sprouts from Brussels. It focuses more on European policy developments. Uh, so uh, at EU level in Brussels, that affects seeds and crop diversity in general. And it's usually, so the, the idea <coughs> we have it is that it's once a month. Uh, and this month's issue has three points. So the first one, which is uh, much larger, uh, relates to the seeds marketing reform that is upcoming. The second point is on the EP report on the biodiversity strategy and the European Parliament report on the farm to fork strategy. Uh, we're going to have time for questions afterwards, and uh, then I'll speak just in three slides about patents in general before we delve into the two approaches of the two associations who kindly, very kindly accepted the offer to talk uh, with us today. So on the seed marketing reform, I just wanted to give you a bit of timeline information. So on the 29th of April this year, a study was published by a consultancy along with the commission staff working document. This was requested by the European Council, which are representatives of member states. So government representatives have asked the European Commission to come up with a study on the uh, options for a future reform. The commission picked it up and basically uh, it started the entire process with, uh, high, with highlighting different problems with the current legislation and paving the way for four options going forward. The study was presented by the European Commission to the same, so EU member states representatives uh, at the Agri-Fish Council, which is competent for agriculture, on the 26th of May. Uh, most of the country uh, representatives um, welcomed the study. They didn't really um, mention which option they preferred. Some of them did. So it's highlighted in the sprouts if you want to go look for the details. Uh, you have, for instance, Germany quite clearly uh, trying to, you know, pushing for something even more uh, liberal for space for seed conservation networks and sale to amateur gardeners. Uh, and you have Poland, for instance, who basically don't want to reform anything. So it goes uh, everywhere in a way, uh, in terms of reactions. On the 15th of June, uh, the commission published what is called an inception impact assessment, um, which you can comment on on the Have Your Say website, which is the public consultation website that the European Commission uses until the 15th of July. So you still have a week to comment on this document. And that document basically uh, is like a condensed version of the Commission staff working document, along with some preliminary uh, assessment of impacts like economic, social and environmental. I'll, I'll, the next slide is more on this document. So I'm going to skip to this quite quickly. But the 22nd of June, what happened also is that the Commission presented this time the impact assessment, the inception impact assessment to the European Parliament, which is the co-legislator. So we have co-legislators at uh, EU level, the European Council, which is EU member state representatives, and the European Parliament, which is directly elected. And on its agri committee, there was a hearing where the Commission presented. Very, very few uh, members of Parliament actually took the floor, which, I mean, th there might be very different reasons for this, uh, COVID being one of them, because they can't be present still, like most of them can't be present in the hemicycle. So they need to still uh, work virtually, but also because I think they're not aware uh, that much. So the, there's really, a job of awareness raising that needs to be done with the European Parliament to change that lack of interest. Uh, what's next? So in September, the real impact assessment will be kicked off by the consultancy, by an external consultancy, uh, which has not signed a contract yet. And then in November 2021 to February 2022, there will be a public consultation that will feed the impact assessment 
which is what the commission says. We don't necessarily know more about it, but it will be more data, I think, that they ask for really with a questionnaire, I guess. At the end of 2022, we're going to have a new proposal, most probably directives. So directives that need to be transposed in national legal, uh, legal orders and not a regulation, which is like a binding law at EU level, like last time. Uh, the inception impact assessment, so the thing that you may want to respond to now until next week, uh, basically highlights two main problems with the legislation today at EU level on seeds marketing. They basically say that the, there's a divergent implementation, which creates a non-level playing field between operators in different uh, countries. So the seed notion of seed marketing is not interpreted the same way. So the certain terms in conservation varieties are not interpreted the same way. Certain obligations are not. The, so the testing criteria are different, etc. When it comes to uh, the assessment of value for cultivation and use, for example. Uh, what I find interesting is that for the first time, uh, the European Commission uh, refers to something called seed conservation networks, uh, which could include so both gardeners and farmers, but they also very put the emphasis on the fact that you know the, there's too much different interpretation in the definitions and the procedures are too heavy for professional operators, also industrial players, and that's why they, they should be allowed to do testing on their own, basically. That's the main idea behind it. And the second big problem they identify is that it, the legislation prevents innovation and adaptation. So uh, you need more room for new technological developments. They love their biomolecular markers. It's clear they want to be able to basically uh, decide on their own, uh, essentially, as the commission uh, through decrees and change the testing criteria, so adapt the, the entire legislation uh, to the technological needs, etc. And it also creates apparently barriers to market access. So not just for more heterogeneous uh, populations, so non-uniform varieties, but also probably uh, new GMO seeds. And then you have four options for reform. Option zero is do nothing. But from the different interventions of the European Commission, uh, that's clear that it's a no-go, actually. They just have it there to be able to compare data, but they're going to do something. Uh, and the minimum thing they're going to do is option one, is the, what they call legislative alignment and structural simplification. And here, the focus is only on professional operators. So they streamline everything. They streamline definitions. They streamline procedures. They allow for controls under so-called, so they call this official supervision. So basically, operators can do the controls and testing, et cetera, uh, in their own fields. And the, the public authorities only come to control them. And it's everything is risk-based, is aligned, and it's only mostly about uh, professional operators. Uh, perhaps also something on conservation varieties here, but it's not clear what they want to change in that regime. The option two is basically option one plus what they call flexibility to adapt. But here, interestingly, so the sale to uh, non-professional users, so to market gardeners, is excluded from the scope of the legislation. And they will create what they call an ad hoc framework for exchange and sale in kind only uh, for farm between farmers that are in association. So it's a bit restrictive, quite a bit, but at least there's something there that to work on in option two. Uh, sustainability criteria will also become mandatory here, but uh, I mean, you, uh, you know better than I do that you can put a lot of things in sustainability. <laughs> you know, I can go in various different ways. And option three is the worst one uh, because so it's basically everything on option one. So alignment, uh, simplification and 
controls and then full flexibility, high guarantee, guarantees for users. So everything is in scope of the legislation, exchange of seeds between farmers, sale to market gardeners, and everything that is a derogation to the main regime is uh, limited. So in scope and niche, very, very small, small uh, derogations. And uh, everything is streamlined with the official controls regulation. So it's very, very industry friendly as an option. So this is for the seeds marketing reform. Uh, please do not hesitate, I think, to uh, give feedback on the website. You don't need to be a lawyer to actually give feedback on anything. So please just, you know, uh, the more people respond, I think the better uh, things will turn out at the end. So second uh, thing that happened last month, uh, so in May 2020, the European Union has published its biodiversity strategy, uh, which is part of the European Green Deal. And since then, which is a long time ago, the European Parliament has been working on its, what they call this own initiative report. So they're basically their take on what the European Commission is doing. And the competence was with the Environmental Committee uh, and the resolution was voted on the 9th of June. With regards to crop diversity, there's like one paragraph, which is quite general and positive, in my opinion, even though it stays very general and doesn't give very specific policy uh, tools and options. Basically, they recognize that agricultural production and consumption are increasingly focused on a limited range of agricultural crops and within them limited varieties and genotypes and that you need um, to enhance and preserve genetic variability to promote the diversity of agricultural ecosystems and preserve local genetic resources and especially so using local breeds and varieties best suited to the local ecosystems so this is a very general paragraph, which is quite, I think, positive. Uh, the caveats come from uh, the things that come, so the paragraphs which relate to GMOs. So there's a pretty good uh, paragraph on calling for a moratorium uh, on account of the precautionary <laughs> principle for gene drive organisms. But there's also uh, one sentence which calls a bit the, like a toolbox for farmers toolbox for farmers and in there they basically uh, refer to resistant varieties requiring fewer inputs which is basically the diplomatic way of saying new GMOs <laughs> in the EU bubble language okay but uh, it's much uh, better than actually what's happening in the oh and the farm to fork strategy, which is basically the sister strategy of the European Green Deal within the European Green Deal. And here, basically, the vote has been postponed mm -hmm. because the Environment Committee, uh, committee uh, has joint competence with the Agricultural Committee. And there is a very intense uh, fight between the two, and especially on uh, the the notion, so the, the role that could be played by new GMOs and GMOs in general in uh, achieving the targets that have been set in the farm to fork strategy, which is about uh, restoration so of uh, biodiversity. You have specific targets on reduction of pesticide use and uh, the growth of also uh, organic land. So lands and farming, arable land uh, cultivated under organic conditions. And probably it will mention innovative breeding techniques. Okay, so the compromise amendments, we don't know exactly uh, what they look like, but uh, yeah, they, they will mention uh, new GMOs without mentioning them, probably. Hopefully next to agroecology. So they, the, the vote here will take place in September instead of July. If you have any questions, uh, please, you can raise your hand and then I'll switch to the patents. Please don't hesitate. <laughs>